Now that we know the volume element of a spherical coordinates, let's use that now to figure out properties to deal with the wave function solutions for the hydrogen atom. So in this first problem, we're going to find out what is the most probable distance the electron is away from the nucleus when the electron is in the 1s orbital. And so the way that we're going to solve this is that we are going to say, if this is my nucleus sitting here at the center of uh, my coordinate spacer at my origin, then for every radius there is a shell that I can draw around that that basically then is going to account for all the theta and all the phi angles and basically determine what is the probability of finding the electron at any of these radii. And so what our strategy then is going to have to be is that we're going to have to do an integral for all of theta and all of phi and we'll leave r alone because we're not going to integrate over r because we're not trying to add up all of these shells that I'm drawing around. We want to compare all of these shells with each other to then find out which one has the largest probability and then hence we'll find out what is the most probable distance we will f that we'll find the electron away from the nucleus. So again, just to remind us, the probability of finding the electron in some volume element dv, well, that's going to be equal to psi star times psi r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. And if I want to find the probability that I'm going to find the electron in one of these rings, meaning I'm going to find it between r and r plus dr, then that means then I have to take the integral over 0 and pi, which is my theta coordinate, 0 and 2 pi, which is my phi coordinate, psi star 1s, psi 1s, times r squared, sine theta, dr, d theta, d phi. And so again, I'm taking the integral over theta and over phi over all space because again, I'm trying to find the probability between r and r plus dr. And that means then I have to then find the integral over these shells. So almost like I have an onion that at each layer of the onion, that's the probability of finding the electron at some distance r away from the nucleus. So let's explicitly substitute in now for the 1s wave function. So here's my integral 0 to pi, my integral 0 to 2 pi. Well, psi star 1s, since I have no complex value inside this orbital, then I can just write 1 over the square root of pi times 1 over a naught to the power of 3 halves, e to the minus r over a naught. Then I'm going to multiply by 1 over the square root of pi times 1 over a naught raised to the power of 3 halves, e to the negative r over a naught, r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. And so everything that's in this first term that I'm highlighting here all the way up to the r squared, all of this, this is something that can essentially come straight out of the integral. And the reason for that is that this first integral, this has to do with an integral over theta, and the second integral has to do with an integral over phi. And so all the stuff that I've highlighted with green, all that has nothing to do with either of those coordinate spaces. And so that can come straight out to the front. And so I'll simplify all of those terms. And so what I'm going to be left with is pi a naught cubed over r squared e to the negative 2r over a naught times dr. And what I'm left with then is then all the terms with theta. So here's my integral over theta between 0 and pi. And I just have the sine theta d theta. And I've got my integral between 0 and 2 pi, which is my integral over phi. And my only term that has to do with phi is just the d phi. And so you can see how these integrals have actually gotten very, very, very straightforward. So again, I've got r squared pi over a naught cubed, e to the negative 2r over a naught dr. Well, the integral of sine theta d theta, that's just going to be equal to negative cosine theta, and that's evaluated between 0 and pi. 
the integral of d phi, well that's just equal to phi, and evaluated between 0 and 2 pi. Let's now apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to both of those terms. So I've still got my r squared over pi a naught cubed e to the minus 2r over a naught times dr. Applying the fundamental theorem of calculus here, I have negative cosine pi minus minus gives me a plus cosine of 0. The second term I have 2 pi minus 0. And so what we have here is we have the cosine of 0, well that goes to 1. The cosine of pi, well that's equal to negative 1. And negative negative 1, well that term also gives me a 1. So in this case that term will add to 2. And what I'll get out of the second term here is 2 pi minus 0 is just going to be equal to 2 pi. What that means then is that I'm going to have r squared over pi a naught cubed e to the negative 2r over a naught dr times 2 times 2 pi. And right now I'm going to cross off the pi on the top and the pi on the bottom. And what I'm going to be left with is 4 r squared over a naught cubed e to the negative 2r over a naught times dr. And so with this result now, again, what it tells us is that when we try to calculate each of these rings, so all the probability that's going to be evaluated at some radius r, that's going to be what is going to be the result of that term that I, we just derived at the bottom, because we've added it up all the probability at each radius r. So the problem told us they wanted us to find the most probable distance that we're going to find this electron. So we're not quite done yet. What we actually have to do is we have to take the derivative with respect to r of this term, of this 4r squared a naught cubed e to the minus 2r over a naught. And we're trying to find a maxima, which means that we're going to find out when the slope of that term, or the derivative of it, is equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a couple of constants. I'll say 4 times a naught cubed d by dr applied to r squared e to the minus 2r over a naught. That's equal to 0. Well, since I have a bunch of terms equal to 0, then all those constants out front, they can disappear. And here I've got a derivative of a function of r times a function of r, so I have to apply the product rule. So I'm going to have the first times the derivative of the second e to the minus 2r over a naught times the derivative of the inner function, minus 2 over a naught. And to that I'm going to add the second term times the derivative of the first. And that's still equal to 0. And so in this case now what I have is I have an e to the minus 2r over a naught. I have that in both terms. I have a 2 in both my terms, and I have at least an r in both my terms. So I can distribute all that out front. So I have an r e to the negative 2r over a naught. And to that, I, then I'm going to be left with r times, or r divided by a naught. I'm going to keep the negative sign. And I'm going to add 1 to that. And that's going to be still equal to 0. And again, because I have all these terms out front, and I have a 0 on the other side, well, I can divide both sides by all those terms. And so those terms effectively go away. And so what we're left with is minus r over a naught plus 1 is equal to 0. That means I can rearrange this, and I can say 1 is equal to r over a naught. And what this means in the end is that the most probable distance for that electron to be in the 1s orbital is at the Bohr radius. Now this is actually a really neat result that the most probable radius for the 1s orbital is at the Bohr radius. Because remember when we had the Bohr model of the, of the hydrogen atom, we had a nucleus and we had fixed orbits. Where in the n is equal to 1 orbit, this radius we found to be equal to a naught. So the Bohr model actually predicts the exact same radius for 
the hydrogen atom as the Schrodinger equation does. But the big difference between these two models is that for Schrodinger, the R can be any value. It's just that we found it to be in this case that the most probable value is going to be at A naught. Whereas in the Bohr model, the R was fixed. And that this was part of the, the shoehorning of quantization into the Bohr model was that the electrons can only orbit in, in fixed radius orbits around, around the nucleus. Whereas again, with the Schrodinger model of the, the hydrogen atom, the electron can be anywhere. It's just, again, it's just most probable for it to be found at the Bohr radius.